Greetings, friends. In this video, I want to talk about Boost DC-DC converters, understand how they work, and assemble a simple Boost converter using discrete logic. I put a lot of effort into working on this video, so I would appreciate it if you could like the video and share your thoughts in the comments. Friends, be careful when working with Boost voltage converters. Never run a Boost converter without a load and carefully check all connections before starting. So, boost DC-DC converters are used in cases where we need to convert a lower DC voltage into a higher DC voltage. In practice, you have probably encountered such converters on MT3608 and XL6009 chips, which are commonly used to increase the supply voltage in standalone devices. After all, the voltage of a lithium-ion battery is only 3 to 4 volts, and, for example, Arduino is powered by 5 volts. So, how is the voltage increased in such circuits? It's all about the electromotive force of the coil's self-induction. As you probably remember from physics courses, if you quickly insert and remove a magnet inside a coil, voltage is induced in it. This effect is used in voltage generators, where permanent magnets rotate relative to the coils and create voltage in them. The faster the magnets rotate, the more voltage is induced in the coils. A similar effect occurs in step-up voltage converters. Simplifying, it can be represented by the following scheme. We close the switch, and direct current begins to flow through the coil. At the same time, a magnetic field is created around the coil, which opposes the direct flow of current. This is the first phase of the converter. Now we open the switch. The field created by the coil induces voltage in it. And then it's like two batteries connected in series. The power supply voltage plus the voltage induced in the coil goes through the diode to the capacitor and then to the load. This is the second phase. The main feature is that the spike of induced voltage in the coil is several times higher than the power supply voltage. This is how the voltage is increased. To get a feel for how such a converter works, I suggest assembling a simple circuit from discrete components to really understand and see how everything operates. Let's take the K561LN2 chip. This is six inverters in one package. We'll draw a classic generator circuit. We talked about how such a generator works in one of our previous videos. In this form, we conditionally get a square wave, meaning the charging time of the capacitor is equal to the discharging time. Let's add the ability to adjust the high and low level time separately. For this, we install two potentiometers and two diodes. We add an output stage and try to turn it on and look at it with an oscilloscope to see how it all looks. Using the potentiometers, we change the duration of the first and second phases of the converter. It is noticeable that when the first phase is increased, the amount of energy stored in the coil increases. And when the second phase is activated, the back EMF spike is higher, and consequently, the output voltage is also higher. This is with a load of 500 ohms. And what will happen if we increase the load by reducing the resistance to 50? Everything is the same, except that the currents flowing in the circuits have increased. But it is noticeable that with excessive increase in the time of direct current passing through the coil for the power supply unit, essentially a short circuit occurs. That is, when the inductance becomes saturated, it stops resisting the current passing through it, and simply becomes a resistor with low resistance. However, there is no voltage stabilization in such a circuit. Let's fix this by replacing one of the diodes with a transistor, which we will open using a resistor, and we will cover it with a second transistor. And we will supply the signal to this transistor from the output through a 12 volt Zener diode. I took this Zener diode as an example. You can take, for example, a 9 volt one. Let's leave two potentiometers in a circuit for now for adjusting the charging and discharging speed of the capacitor. Let's start. We turn the resistors and observe the output signal. It is noticeable that the voltage does not rise above 12 volts because the voltage stabilization is working. And this is with a load of 50 ohms. That is, the converter delivers about 300 milliamps to the load, which is quite good. However, the efficiency greatly depends on the ratio of the first and second phases. That's why we left the adjustable resistors in the circuit. We aim for better efficiency with the nominal load, after which the potentiometers can be replaced with regular resistors and placed in the circuit. That is, you remove the potentiometers, measure their resistance, and then place resistors of the same value in their place. If we reduce the inductance, the energy stored in the coil will also decrease. To ensure 
that the induced EMF has the same amplitude, the switching frequency will need to be increased. That's why in high-frequency converters, the inductance is usually a few microhenries, while in lower-frequency ones, it can be tens or even hundreds of microhenries. I can recommend replicating such a stabilizer only if you need to power a low-power load of tens of milliamps, no more. For more powerful consumers, I think it's still easier to assemble a DC-DC converter on a specialized microchip. Fortunately, there are many of them available now. Or fine, a power supply with a voltage higher than what you need and make a step-down converter. Which we might also discuss, if you like the video. Also, I don't fail to mention another interesting converter circuit I found in the book, Original Power Supply Designs, built on a Schmidt trigger. This circuit is designed to boost the battery voltage to 9 volts to power a multimeter. This part represents a clock pulse generator at a frequency of approximately 250 kilohertz. Next, this part of the circuit is a monostable multivibrator. That is, this part of the circuit generates a pulse of a specified duration upon receiving an enabling pulse. By default, at inputs 1 and 2, a logical 1, output 3, logical 0, output 6, logical 1, charging capacitor C3 via diode. When a pulse arrives at input 1 through the capacitor, a 1 appears at the third output, and a logical 0 appears at output 6. The capacitor begins to discharge through a resistor to ground. We can increase the discharge with the help of a transistor, which is controlled by a signal from the converter's output. This way, the voltage is stabilized by adjusting the discharge time of the capacitor. Friends, modern DC-DC converter chips have excellent characteristics, so my advice is to use these kinds of chips. But if you find yourself in a situation where you need to increase the voltage, and you don't have specialized chips on hand, you can do it with available materials, as I showed you today. A similar circuit can also be assembled using a 555 timer. For example, I have a similar circuit assembled in a homemade tester for Zener diodes, where a simple circuit on a 555 timer increases the voltage to 80 or 90 volts. All you need is to organize the generation of short pulses with adjustable pause and duration. Then figure out how to adjust these parameters using feedback. I hope the video was interesting to you. Ask your questions and share your experiences in building DC-DC converters in the comments below the video. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. This was Andre with you. Goodbye.